listen, I don't get me wrong. I feel the same shit that you do in certain times. Like, listen, there are people in this country that have jobs that they shouldn't have, right? And most of us get really pissed and irate because we just don't want to deal with an accent so thick that we can't get shit done. I understand that, right? But unlike most people, I don't get mad at them. I'm really curious as to how they got the fucking job. Like, how did you get this fucking job? So, if you're ever on the 101 in Santa Maria, California, there's a 24-hour McDonald's. Wednesday through Sunday, midnight to six, there's a Mexican lady named Maria who works the drive-thru. Now, I want you to know something. Maria is in this room tonight. She's a cool person. I love her. Whenever I'm in town, I give her free shit. She is good peeps. That being said, I don't know how that puta got a job. <laughs> Where speaking English is a fucking requirement because Maria's accent is so goddamn thick. The first time I met her, she confused the shit out of me. I had no idea that McDonald's now serves creepy chicken. Yeah, she tried to sell me creepy fucking chicken. I don't know what creepy chicken, I've never had creepy chicken. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I was high as fuck. You can't say that to a high person! I'm in my car for 20 minutes going, what the fuck is creepy chicken? Holy shit, I'm so high, I can't remember what creepy chicken is. And I pulled into this McDonald's, I was actually performing here, right? Just like tonight, I have a show tomorrow in Columbia, South Carolina. So in order to get there on time, I have to fly, I have to drive from here, probably about midnight, get home at about five, catch a flight at seven o'clock in the morning so I could get to the East Coast. This is the kind of crazy shit I do. So it was one of those days I was driving down. It was four o'clock in the morning. I get to this McDonald's and I remember thinking, whoever's giving up a Saturday for minimum wage is not the star on the Christmas tree. This is definitely one of those blinking lights fucking up a whole other row of lights. So I braced myself for some level of stupid, but goddamn McDonald's, goddamn McDonald's. Because you know what McDonald's does? They know they have people with accents. That's why I don't know if you know that when you go to the drive thru sometimes, the first person you hear, it's not a real person, it's a recording. Then they slip in the real person. I didn't know. I thought I hit the jackpot when I heard, good evening and welcome to McDonald's. Would you like to try one of our Oreo McFlurries this evening? I was in my car, high as shit, like, what? I was not expecting a voice of such eloquence at this hour. How fortuitous for us to have met under these auspicious circumstances. And though grateful I am for your offer, my sincerest of apologies and most likely possible regrets, for there is far too much sugar in a McFlurry. I am feeling more on the winding down part of my evening, but I do believe I would enjoy a McRap. Would you like a creepy chicken? What the fuck did you just say? Did she say creepy chicken? Did she say creepy chicken? Thank God my friend Randy, who's black from Baltimore, was there. So I'm like, hey, Diz, have you ever heard of creepy chicken? And he got all feelings on me. Are you asking me about chicken because I'm black? I'm like, obviously, yes. And if it was a burrito question, you would have asked me, so don't be a fucking asshole. You always ask me Mexican shit, and you know I'm from Honduras, so go fuck yourself with your bullshit. He's like, nah, man. I ain't never heard of no creepy ass motherfucking chick. And I didn't say anything at the time, but in my head I was like, why the fuck did he get blacker? So I realized, like, this must be me. I'm the one that's high. I go, I'm sorry, senora, but what kind of chicken did you say you had? And the puta ugh me. I heard it. I go, what kind of chicken did you say you had? And I heard it go, ugh. What the, what? Oh, you're annoyed with this fucking conversation? She goes, I can understand what you say. You can understand what I'm fucking saying? She goes, just come to order in the second window. At this point, even Randy's like, there's no G in fucking window. 
Bro, lower your voice. She's going to shit in our sandwiches. So anyway, I'm sorry. This is the longest joke ever. Uh, I get to the second window. Yeah, I'm still at the drive through fuckers. I'm sorry. I know this is the longest fucking story ever. <laughs> I know. So I get to the second window. And I tried to be nice, right? I tried to order in Spanish. Now let's get some shit straight. I don't need to order in a foreign language in order to make it easier and facilitate the process for you because you are incapable of speaking the language upon which the menu was written in the first place. I don't have to do that, but I'm not a piece of shit. So I looked at her and I went, Oiga, señora, obviamente los dos hablamos español, así es que por qué no me dejo ordenar en español, así no tenemos que hablar inglés y todo tranquilo, ¿verdad que sí? I thought she was going to say gracias, but this bitch went like this. I speak at the kingi. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and how am I the asshole? <laughs> so then my friend Cisco, who's sitting behind Randy, taps me on the shoulder and goes, you see, bro, these people come from other countries. They don't learn the language. And now we got to go somewhere else to get food because this bitch can't pronounce crispy fucking chicken. <laughs> to which I replied, don't interrupt me, bro, because I got a flow going here. Here it is. Whew. She is not the problem in this country. It is Americans like you who do not understand to differentiate between a symptom and a problem. You do not know how to discern. You assume that they're the same, not understanding that one is not curable while the other one is, for one is only there as a symptom to let you know you have a problem in the first place. You see, a booger is not a cold. A booger is a side effect, an infection that comes from having a cold, but there is no cure for a goddamn booger. That's why there's no booger section at a Walgreens Rite Aid or fucking CVS. But there is a cough and a cold section, which is the problem in the first place. And when you take medication for the cough and the cold, the booger, which is a symptom, goes away because it was a part of the fucking thing itself, not a symptom only in and of itself. And therefore, you need to shut the fuck up about Maria. She is a booger. <laughs> and Randy is like, how fucking high are you? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm very high, bitch. But don't take away from the brilliant shit I just fucking said. <laughs> brilliant. You just called her a booger. And I stand by my fucking analogy. She's annoying like a booger. She won't go away like a booger. And she, is she still there? Yeah, like a booger! <laughs> but she's still not the problem. So I'm not mad at her. And Randy goes, well, who the fuck are you mad at? I'm mad at every American that applied for that fucking job too. Because <laughs> after all the interviews were done, the best applicant says creepy fucking chicken <laughs> now she's happy she looks at me and goes yo pensaba que tu eras un come mierda but no you're nice I didn't know I'm sorry sabes que I'm gonna give you free sandwiches what do you want what do you want I go what's the healthiest thing on the menu she goes fallacio fish <laughs> what the fuck did you just say to me <laughs> you have fallacio fish even Randy's like, she got fish and suck a dick. <laughs> she made it worse. She made it worse. I said, no, I don't want creepy chicken. I don't want fellatio fish. And then she goes, you want cheese verga? I do not want cheese verga. <laughs> that means cheese dick in Spanish. I'm not circumcised. I already have queso cotija in there if I don't clean it right. It's okay. I'm not circumcised. I don't give a shit. <laughs>